Hi, I am Sabrina, and what's a Chinese girl like me have any business making a video on how to make pierogies? Well, number one, I have always loved pierogies ever since I was a kid. And number two, my son, my 10-year-old, is learning about uh, Russian immigration into America, and that's part of his history class. And so I volunteer to teach him as well as a bunch of 10 year olds on how to do it. And I must say, this is not an easy recipe in terms of time. It's gonna take a whole Saturday afternoon to do it. So get prepared and get some free labor of these kids. The first step of this recipe is a fabulous dough. You can basically dissolve a package of yeast, a teaspoon of sugar, and a quarter cup of warm water. Mix it all up, let it sit, in a warm location. It takes about 10 to 15 minutes for it to get nice and frothy. From there, mix three eggs, a half a cup of oil, five teaspoons of sugar, and one teaspoon of salt. You mix it all up, and then add that mixture to a warm pot of milk. Gently whisk it together and remove it from the heat. You're going to use four cups of all-purpose flour, but start with half of that and put half of the flour in a large mixing bowl and gradually stir in the milk mixture. Then you're going to add the yeast solution alternately with the remaining flour, stirring after each addition. important thing to know is that your milk mixture can't be too warm or it will kill the yeast. The recipe officially asks for four cups of flour, but um, in the times I've made it, it still feels a little wet. And so you may end up adding, you know, a half cup there and a half cup here to get it just the right consistency. And then ultimately you're going to let it rest, put it in a bowl, and put a wet cloth over it and let it rest and double in size. There's lots of possible piroshki fillings. I decided to do a traditional one, which is ground beef, cabbage, onion, salt, pepper, and fresh dill, even hard boiled eggs. I have a pound of ground beef that I um, ground up and I try to do the, not a super lean one, but uh, pretty lean because I don't like it fatty. That's ground beef. Uh, one, either two small onions or uh, one large onion, sort of caramelized. Um, you could do it with a little bit of butter and canola oil. Cabbage. I have a really large one, so I decided not to use the whole thing. There's about three quarters of a large cabbage or one small big one, sort of chopped up and ground. And I like to season. Um, my things along the way, not just red, add the salt at the very end. So, mix it all in. And my favorite ingredient is dill. It asks for like a teaspoon. I say be generous. And it's I use fresh dill. And let's see, come closer. And you can see it. Dill is so good. And so this is just one of many kind of toppings you can put inside your piroshki. You can make it a vegetarian piroshki. You can add cannelli beans, like white beans. You could um, add broccoli and beef. It could be a beef cheese. So this is just one of many amazing options for your piroshki. Hey, so now we're ready to actually construct the piroshkis. This dough has been sitting here all the time where I was working on the filling. The Dough has been resting and rising, and it's like, oh man, it's, this is gold. It's so light, and it's like a, kind of like a, feels like the weight of a, a little bit heavier than a football, and it's light and airy. And so the goal is now to turn this into 30 little golf balls. So you're basically going to take some, 
and spend the next <laughs> five minutes making that size ball and that will end up being a fabulous piroshki. So these are my 30 little golf ball size things and so I kind of keep it covered to keep it moist. And now um, I'm going to roll it out. I guess you could do it by hand but I use a roller and I um, put a little bit of flour on it. And I'm not aiming for circle. I'm actually aiming for more of an oval. About three and a half to four inches in diameter. Okay, from here, I'm gonna put some stuffing in. And you can add cheese if you want at this point. And it's closing. And this is really just a pinch, pinching close. I don't know the official Russian way to do it. Pinching, I feel like I'm making Chinese gawk, but pinch, pinch, pinch. So then you have this middle seam. I kind of turn up the edges a little bit. And this is the size, like, I don't know, of a baby fingerling potato, practically. Um, and I'm going to place it seam side down. And it's that seam that you get. This is seam when you put it in the oil. That makes that beautiful crack uh, that you, it's very distinguished in a piroshki. More to go. I know this sounds a little goofy, but it really, really works. Uh, last time I made this, we made 120 piroshkis for like 60 kids with very different tastes. We had a veggie one, a beef and cheese, and just pure beef. And I didn't know how to distinguish which piroshkis would go to who, so we marked them. And I didn't know how I was going to mark it, but I think this is what they do in Chinese dim sum places. You just take food coloring, you can use all the different colors. So in this case, um, I'm going to use red. I took an old chopstick that I don't mind throwing away. And I gave them a dot. And in this case, the red dot, can you see the red dot? Means uh, this is going to be a pure beef with no cheese. The last step is either to deep fry, my preference, or to bake the piroshkis. Um, you can heat it, the oil to 375 or bake at 400 degrees for about 20 minutes. Um, <laughs> this is really important. Before you put them in, be sure to check to see if your piroshki is really tightly sealed because if it's not, it'll break open and the contents will sort of spill into your oil. Um, sometimes you have a very stubborn little piroshki that doesn't want to turn around, so you'll have to uh, be vigilant with these uh, rascals. I drain my piroshkis on paper towels and a little rack and let them cool. Definitely do that before serving. They freeze really well. You can microwave them to heat them up. <laughs> Delicious. 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 <laughs>